I think it's kind of boring that without doing any illegal activity, you can't go on like a like a stealth mission or something like just in your neighborhood, like night vision goggles, sneaking around, like not to do anything nefarious, but is it nefarious? I thought it was nefarious. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm just talking about like have, having a good time, maybe with some some friends and like going on a mission. Uh, you know, I, I think that would be like a fun thing, like a video game almost. But, you know, without obviously, you know, do, doing bad stuff. Do you, you know what I mean? Steve Wonder here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to talk about how you can deploy scheduled tasks from Intune, whether to use through autopilot provisioning or just whenever you like. I mean, I still think it could be fun. You ever go on Amazon and look up like tactical gear type stuff? No? Well, I don't want to be on some list now. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so it's not uncommon that when you're managing or deploying Windows, you're going to want to set some kind of a scheduled task, right? That scheduled task might, you know, prompt uh, something in PowerShell. The scheduled task might be, uh, you know, all kinds of things. It might run something on an event. Even uh, maybe you want to run something on boot up. I'm not going to go into all the reasons uh, you would schedule a task, but how do you do that through Intune, right? Um, and this comes especially handy when you want to start sequencing things. So the best way that I have found to do it, there's two ways, right? So let's go over each one. The first is going to be doing it with a PowerShell script. So I'm going to make a new folder and I am going to make a task that checks who the primary user is. Check user task. Obviously, it could be anything, it doesn't really matter. So you're gonna need two files. And the first file is the task itself. Now, a really easy way to get this is to go on your reference machine and just open the task scheduler. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to create task. And you do have to fill in some general information. So mine will be user, uh, primary user check. And I wanna run this as system and with highest privileges. Now triggers are where you define where the task, you know, when it runs. You can run something on a schedule. I'm gonna set mine to run at a logon of any user, right? Uh, actually, you know what? I wanna change that to have a minute delay. Delay for one minute. And then your action will be what you wanna happen. Now you can do several things. You could start a program, which is the most common, send in the, oh, those are deprecated. Never mind. you can't do several things. So we're just gonna start a program. Now I'm gonna run a PowerShell script. So the actual program I'm going to run, you're gonna actually wanna browse to the Windows PowerShell uh, folder, which is right here. Under system 32, Windows PowerShell V1, and there should be the PowerShell EXE. So that's what we're gonna run. Now the arguments, those are going to be like your execution policy bypass. So I'm going to run a script. So my script is going to be, so it's going to be execution policy bypass uh, file. And I'm going to put the path to where I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it in C program data uh, scripts user check.ps1. Now, of course, there's nothing there yet, but we're going to put something there. So I've created that. And once I've created it, I'm going to export it. I'm going to export into the folder I just made. Primary user check XML. Okay. And then what you can do, if you don't want it to run on this machine, you can disable it. You could even delete it. Okay. So let's take a look at what we just created. This primary user check XML. So this is what tasks look like, right? It's just XML. It's information about the task, the name of it, anything that would go along with that. And then here you can see the command. The command is the PowerShell app. And these are my arguments. I am going to need that script, but I'm also going to need to put the script somewhere, right? All right. So now that we have the task, let's make the script. And the script is going to be uh, user check. Is that what I called it? The PS1. And we're going to uh, write our script here. And the script is going to be uh, very straightforward. I'm just going to get the current logged in user. And since I'm running in system context, we're going to do our old old trick here. Username equals get sim instance class name win32 computer system. Yeah. 
You might be wondering why I'm using Notepad++ instead of VS Code, and I just felt like mixing it up today. I'm a very wild person, and I am like to live dangerously. Okay. Uh, and then the SID. Actually, that's enough. We don't have to do all this. So now I can just, um, I can export that. I can say username output out file and we'll just put it in the direct that same directory c program data uh scripts scripts and we'll call it primary user dot text okay nothing like i said nothing super fancy this is just an example of how to do the tasks all right so i have those I have my user checker. I have my primary user check task. Now I need a script to orchestrate all of this. So what I'm going to do is create one more file and we're going to call this install task PS1. Okay. And that'll set the task for us. So let's go ahead and package this up now that we have everything. Um, and in creating all this, we kind of created our own detection rules and everything. So you can see um, the C program data scripts. And the, you know, the presence of the file can kind of be our detection rule. The fact that the user check is in there. So we're going to open up our content prep tool, grab that, run it as administrator, install task.ps1 would be the install setup file. There we go. Oh, okay. So now we have an install task in tune win. So when I go to Intune, I'm going to go to windows. Uh, sorry, apps, windows, and we're going to create a new app and it is going to be a windows app, win32. Select, select package file and check user task. And there it is. So a few things, right? We can change the name, right? We'll say primary user task install, uh, get Rubix as the publisher, right? You can add your icon if you want. So your install command is going to be PowerShell exe execution policy bypass, and then it'll be install task.ps1 because remember we need to point to our install file there. Uh, uninstall, I don't really have one for this. Um, you could remove the detection directory if you want. Um, you could even maybe write a script that removes the task altogether. That might not be a bad idea. Um, but I'm going to ignore that for now because I don't really care. Uh, next. Okay. The detection rule is going to be manual and we're going to do a file. So we're going to do the path is C program data scripts. And if the install um, task. No, is it the install task? Which one is it? Uh, the user check PS1, right? It's if the user check PS1 is there, then we're good. And the file or folder exists. And you can hit OK, and you can package this and deploy it. And we'll be all good to go. That's probably the best way to do it because you get the benefit of the Win32 detection and, you know, uh, having everything packaged together, a little more control over how it gets assigned. If you want an alternative way to do it, you can do it with a power, just straight up PowerShell script and put everything in the one script. So I'm going to show you how to do that. OK, so in order to do this, we need a few things. Uh, the first thing we need is the name of the task. And we're going to call this user check. Actually, we could just call this the same thing we did before, primary user check. So we're going to kind of build this in real time. Uh, the script path, script path is going to be C program data scripts. Uh, scripts dot, we'll call it user check dot PS1. Uh, actually, I should have gotten camel case for that too. Okay. Uh, next, we have to define the action. So the action of the task is uh, a new scheduled task action. And we're going to tell it to execute PowerShell exe. Um, and if you want to be specific, you can add the whole C Windows System 32, Windows PowerShell, v1.0, PowerShell.exe. You could do that. Um, to mimic what we had before, but honestly, uh, I think PowerShell is enough. 
And the argument is everything to run your script. So that's going to be execution policy bypass. And the file is going to be script path. That's how you actually break out quotes within quotes, the little ticks there. So this is what's going to get set inside the task. Now we're going to do a few more things. So let's actually call that the task action task action. We're going to need a task trigger. That'll be new scheduled task trigger. And we're going to write at log on. That's a built in parameter. Now we need to know how we're going to run it. So task principal is going to be new scheduled task principal is user ID. We're just going to put in system. The logon type is a service account. And we're going to run level will be the highest. Register the scheduled task and fill everything in. So we're going to say the test name is test name, obviously. Action is task action. Trigger is test trigger. And principal is task principal. So we kind of thought of everything here. You can even give it a description if you want. Um, run the primary user check script at every logon. But wait a minute. There is no user check PS1. I'm not going to be able to deploy that in just one script. So now what do I do? Well, the good news there is you can always, you're actually going to move my head down to the corner because I'm, there we go. I'm just always getting in the way and I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So that's what I did. Okay. So we can actually create the script beforehand and place it there. So first thing we're going to do is make our destination path and that's going to be C program data scripts, right? And if it doesn't exist, we're going to make it. Make your destination. Okay. Now what we have to do is we have to say script text and we can actually write the full contents of our script out. Uh, right here. So what this allows us to do is paste a script inside. So I'm going to take our, um, I'm going to take the text of our PowerShell script. And I'm just going to paste that in here. So this is actually going to write the script to me. So now what I can do is I could say new item. Item type is a file path. That's going to go in destination. And the name is going to be uh, user check dot PS one there. That's the new file. We can take our script text and pipe that to a set content path destination user check dot PS one force. So now we're creating the file in real time and then making the script. And if you want to deploy this within tune, all you have to do is we're going to go back to devices. We're going to go down to scripts and remediation platform scripts and you can add it. So Windows 10 and later user check test. Just upload your script, which in our case is going to be on the desktop. Uh, create task. We don't want the logged on credentials. We don't want to enforce a check, but we do want to run a 64 bit host. And then you would assign it and save it. So there we go. Two ways to push scripts. Honestly, I think the win 32 method is better, but some people don't have a problem pushing platform scripts. And it's kind of cool to know you can create the files and the actions inside of one script. You know what I say, options are better. And I will say setting tasks with, with PowerShell is a very common engine activity. There are things we need to do in order to automate or sequence, uh, you know, just a lot of items and we just can't do it with the way Intune is today. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know what you're doing for tasks. If you have some alternate ways, you know, I'm always looking for better ideas and we'll be seeing you.